Magandang gabi po sa aking uh, makababayang Pilipino dyan sa Pilipinas at uh, kung sa mga kayo narin sa mundo. Uh, bago po magsimula, batin ko lang aking mga kaibigat mga viewers na nandito na si Sis Best Friend, Sir Rob, uy, Sir Gis. Magandang gabi po sa inyo. Uh, ito po ngayong gabi ang ating uh, vlog na to. Handog po natin to kay uh, uh, Kapersi. Uh, yung real name niya po, uh, Perci Percival Karag Mabasa. Uh, ito po yung uh, isang taon na uh, anibersaryo ng uh, kanyang pagkamatay. Uh, itong vlog po natin, inahandog ko po kay uh, uh, Kapersia, no? Kasi uh, dati po, uh, isa rin po ako ang tagapanood niya. Pinapanood ko lang siya sa YouTube. At uh, siya yung uh, sa kanya kumukuha ng information, ano? Uh, para malaman kung ano nangyayari dyan sa bansa natin, no? Uh, at uh, nung uh, nabalitaan kong... Uh, Uh, na baril parang uh, si uh, lapid fire nga po sabi sa news ano sa, parang hindi po ako makapaniwala hindi ako makapaniwala uh, akala ko ibang tao no yung pala nung uh, na, na news na sa mainstream media uh, uh, yung palagi ko pong pinapanood halos gabi-gabi uh, si Kapersi siya pa nga po yung uh, na baril ano at napatay at uh, ako po yung nalungkot no at uh, Uh, eto uh, dahil lang po sa kanya uh, pinakita ko na yung mukha ko sa vlog ano? uh, dati hindi po ako nagbablog na pinapakita mukha ko uh, pinablog, nagbablog lang ako yung uh, mga storytelling na uh, copy paste no? yung English na para sa ano para magkaroon ng pera no? kasi uh, yun nga po sa ads ng YouTube no? pero <clears throat> Nung na, nalaman ko pong uh, si Kapersi na patay, na baril, ay para nalungkot po ako. Kasi uh, wala na po, mawawala na, na uh, tayong uh, kababayan na nagsasabi ng katotohanan at uh, i, ibinubulgar niya sa taong bayan kung ano yung uh, katiwalian dyan sa bayan natin. Nalungkot po ako kaya nag, uh, uh, nagkusa na rin ako uh, uh, ipakita mukha ko. Uh, para hindi nila mapatahimik kung sino mga pumatay sa kanya uh, hindi nila mapatahimik ang taong bayan uh, yung nag, uh, nagbibigay ng ilaw no, sa mga katiwalian dyan sa bayan natin uh, pag nandito po, nandito po ako sa Japan uh, siguro uh, uh, maka, kahit uh, papano makapagbigay din ako sa aking uh, nakakayang uh, uh, paraan ano Uh, mensahe sa news ko ano yung uh, nalalaman ko dyan kung ano hindi tama uh, eto na po uh, naglakas loob na po ako na uh, uh, ipakita yung mukha ko at uh, uh, para para sa uh, uh, sambayan ng Pilipino dyan sa Pilipinas uh, eto po handog ko to kay Kapersi siya po nag trigger sa akin na uh, mag vlog ano, na ipakita na yung mukha mga isang taon po no? isang taon na ngayon Uh, alam ko po, hindi lang po ako marami po sa ating mga Pilipino ang uh, sumusuporta kay uh, Kapersi no? uh, eto, meron po akong uh, video nakita kanina dyan sa uh, Rappler uh, i-play ko po no? uh, hindi lang po ako, marami pala tayong mga Pilipino sumusuporta sa kanya eto po, po yung uh, video uh, nakuha natin sa Rappler Pasalamat po tayo sa Rappler at uh, uh, isa rin yung Rappler na uh, hindi talaga nagpapatinag. Ano? Pinapakita nila ang totoo, katotohanan. No? Hindi lang kagaya ng iba, binabayaran. No? Uh, para lang sa sarili nilang mga interes. Ito po, uh, para to sa interes ng uh, karamihan sa ating uh, mga Pilipino, no? sa masang Pilipino. Ito po yung talumpati ng mga sumusuporta kay uh, Sir uh, uh, Percy uh, Karag uh, uh, Percy Lapid po no? i-play lang po natin at uh, ito po yung kapatid niya si Roy Mabasa Percival uh, Karag uh, Mabasa po no? yung real name niya ito po yung kapatid niya si Roy Mabasa play lang po natin Sir Dalibor Mika our uh Sir J.D. of Ayan of uh, Czech Republic, Ambassador of the United Kingdom, Lobophils, Ma'am, 
uh, National Artist Mr. Rio Alma, former Senator Kiko Pangilinan is here with us, uh, Ms. Renuka Radhawa, Second Secretary Political Affairs of UK Embassy, um, Samantha Parks of the United States Embassy, and uh, officers. Ayan po naririnig nyo, di ba? UK, uh, US. May mga uh, representative po sila nagpunta. Uh, sa UP po ata ito. Eh. Play lang po natin. Uh, tuloy na natin i-play. And former interns of the Center for People's Media, faculty and students of the UP College of Mass Communications, colleagues, friends, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. Thank you for joining us uh, in this culminating forum in a series of university discussions that commemorate the first death anniversary of my elder brother, Percy Lapi. In the weeks before he was killed last October 3, Percy had been broadcasting in his radio program his prediction that Duterte's people would be removed from the then three-month-old government. He had, he had said that for the country to have a shot at moving forward, the new government must rid itself of Duterte's minions. The morning following his assassination, my brother fearlessly forecast, fearless forecast came through. News organizations reported that Marcos Executive Secretary, the Press Secretary, and the Chief Government Auditor were no longer part of his official family. Five days later, detained former Senator Laila de Lima, a leading critic of Duterte and his war on drugs, was attacked in a jail and briefly held hostage by another inmate. A mind inclined towards conspiracy theories would conclude that these incidents, my brother's murder, the removal of Duterte's officials from Marcos' cabinet, and the attack on former Senator de Lima form part of a plan to install another Duterte to the presidency. In December last year, the Philippines was treated to destabilization, rumors of disgruntled security officers over police and military appointments. Just before President Bongbong Marcos' second State of the Nation address last July, Congressman and former President Gloria Macapagal Arroyo was stripped of his title, of her title, Senior Deputy Speaker, on reports that she was behind moves to remove presidential cousin Martin Romualdez from the Speakership of the House of Representatives. This is believed to be a prelude to impeach the President. For the past several weeks, we have watched how Cavalier, the highest officials of the land, particularly Vice President Sara Duterte, in a refusal to talk about the hundreds of millions of pesos in intelligence and confidential funds she has requested for an office of the Vice President and her Department of Education. Good thing we have Senator Risa, who is calling out the BP. However, Senator Risa should not be alone, left alone as an opposition voice. The entire Philippine system of laws that should have provided a check and balance on power has been overturned by the culture of violence and impunity and promoted intensified by the man from the bar. The administration of, the, of Marcos is not entirely blameless but Duterte's government took the wobbly Philippine system of state management and broke it into tens of thousands of dead suspects, billions of pesos in intelligence and confidential funds, and Chinese occupation of Philippine territories. The thousands of poor Filipinos killed in the brutal war on drugs. Former Senator De Lima, who remains incarcerated despite the absence of a single ounce of drug as evidence by Brother Percy, the death of the country's largest broadcast network, and our economy that thieving government officials continue to suck dry. 
they are among the victims of this culture of violence and impunity, mostly perpetuated by state actors. How can we put the rule of law and democracy back together again? That is, that is the question all of us have here to answer. Today, on his first death anniversary, we his family and the Center for People's Media, with the financial support of the Czech Republic and the Czech Embassy in the Philippines, are officially launching the Persilapid.com website, which contains archives of his radio and online shows, Lapid Fire. An ongoing project, we are also adding updates on his cases as well. Support and visit the website, yours truly with air lapid fire again soon enough. Thank you very much and good morning to everyone. Ito po yung talumpati ni, uh, ng kapatid ni Sir uh, Percy, no? Uh, sunod po dito sila. Thank you very much for the kind introduction. Uh, Onik Veron. Uh, to uh, um, Mr. Dalibor Micha of the Shack Embassy. Senator Risa. Uh, President Jijin. My uh, contemporary. Uh, a few years back here in UP. <laughs> um, Samantha Parks of the U.S. Embassy. Is uh, Ren Randhawa still with us? Perhaps she had to leave. To the students and uh, members of the media, ladies and gentlemen, magandang uh, umaga. Good morning to everyone. Today on his first day and uh, first death anniversary, we gather to remember Capercy true force for positive change, uh, a true force for freedom, uh, and uh, a true force for the truth. During the May 2022 elections, uh, perhaps uh, not, some of you may not know this, but uh, uh, he mobilized uh, his uh, massive fan base uh, for our campaign, Lenny and Kiko. I'm Kiko, that's me. <laughs> For the Lenny Kiko campaign. He was also one of my uh, advisors uh, during the campaign. He participated in a, a session wherein I was uh, preparing for the debates. So he, he was the one asking all the hard hitting questions and uh, uh, made sure that you know, I was ready uh, uh, for the debates. Uh, I'm told I did okay in the debates. <laughs> Uh, thanks to him, and of course, uh, to Roy too. Uh, Roy brought him in. But, uh, Roy was there constantly uh, uh, preparing us for the, uh, for the media debates, as well as, of course, uh, speaking before crowds, before the campaign uh, rallies, etc. He brought both of them, uh, Roy and Percy, brought their extensive broadcast journalism to the table and equipping me with the tools that I needed for the challenging campaign. Undoubtedly, uh, his passing left a void in the world of broadcast journalism. But today I see a room uh, filled with young minds. Uh, it's good that we are here in the uh, UP de Liman, uh, bastion of uh, youth and student activism. Nasa UP Diliman daw po, no? at saka nandiyan din si uh, Senadora uh, Risa Ontiveros at saka mga representative ng ano ata, ng uh, ano po, uh, US Embassy, mga embassy dyan sa Pilipinas. Um, I see a room full of young minds, future journalists, and it gives me hope that the torch of freedom still burns brightly uh, in our country. Not many of, uh, now, not many of this, but before I became, not many of you know this rather, but before I became a senator, I was also, nabanggit ata kanina ng kaunti, part of the media. I contributed articles to the Manila Times when I was in my early 20s. Uh, and then I was part of ABS-CBN where I hosted various radio uh, programs uh, on DZMM as well as uh, TV shows. Uh, at the ABS-CBN uh, News and Current Affairs. Uh, I left in 2000 to run for the Senate. 
uh, I left ABS to run for the Senate in 2001. Uh, today on KPRC's first death anniversary, let me share you uh, very quickly three insights. Number one, press freedom and freedom of expression are superpowers of democracy. And journalists are the supermen and superwomen of accountability. A free press and open expression empower us to uncover corruption, 125 million, tapos naging palaki ng palaki, no? naging 4.6 billion, unti-unting lumalaki dahil unti-unting nauungkat ang katotohanan. Slowly but surely as the truth unfolds, sadly and quite, uh, uh, quite uh, shocking uh, is the huge amounts billions of money involved, uh, expose abuses of power and ensure that our leaders are on the right track. Malungkot, or sadly, history has been, has seen moments, rather, when media was taken hostage during Marcos Sr.'s senior, martial law era. All media outlets, including Channel 2 then, uh, a prominent media institution, were shut down. Naalala ko yun. I remember that. I was grade 3. I was 9 years old. It was a Saturday. No school, no classes. I was supposed to watch television, but all I saw were ants. Ants. Nothing. Zero. Zilch. Uh, sabi nga, as a 9-year-old, I too fell for deception. Because from grade three until I was a freshman in the University of the Philippines, and even until a sophomore uh, before Ninoy Aquino was shot dead, I believed in the propaganda, in the deception of the Marcos senior uh, propaganda machinery. Fast forward to the Duterte era, it's deja vu with a brutal twist. The continued detention of Lila de Lima, non-renewal of ABS-CBN's franchise, court cases against Maria Ressa, red tagging in those bloody extrajudicial killings. They all felt like a bad rerun. These attacks on press freedom remind us how those in power can silence the media and control the public narrative. That's why we must stay vigilant, protecting the voices that dare to speak the truth. Second, the road to freedom and democracy is paved with sacrifices and good works of journalists and advocates. Uh, Jose Rizal used his pen. Ninoy Aquino used to be a reporter, a war correspondent in Korea, uh, in Korea rather. And Percy Lapid, of course. Their courage should inspire us to stand up for what's right, even when being right is unpopular or means being trolled or bashed or attacked online. Alam namin ni Risa yan. Anim na taon nung ako yung nasa Senado, kasama niya at ni Frank Delon, araw-araw ang uh, pag-aatake at pangi-insulto sa amin. I found myself in that position where I had experienced the consequences of taking a stand for what I believe was right and in my last term in the Senate, I, along with my outspoken daughter, Frankie, were publicly vilified by Duterte himself and his minions in the DDS. Hmm. I am currently persona non grata in China and Hong Kong as a former chairman of the Council of Asian Liberals and Democrats. Our organization was blacklisted. Uh, Ayan, alam niyo na po kung ano ibig sabihin niyan. Yung, uh, kaug, kaug na siya, yung ano nila, uh, uh, ano ni Duterte siya, uh, uh, doon sa China. Ganyan po katindi si Duterte. Ano nga talaga ng China? Tuta ng China. Kaya kung ano sabihin niya, tawagan niya lang doon si Xi Jinping. Ayan, na blacklist na pala si Kiko doon sa Hong Kong, doon sa China. Hindi na po siya ata makapasok doon. Ganun katindi si uh, Duterte. Tuta nga talaga ng China po, di ba? Uh, by China. Our stance on territorial issues and our unwavering solidarity with Asian countries resisting Chinese aggression in the region have led me to this position. Some say that uh, it should be a badge of honor 
and that I should wear it with pride. But I also see it as a rather stark reminder <coughs> of the price one pays for the challenging, for challenging rather the powers that be. So on Tanong, the question we should ask ourselves, how far are we willing to fight for what is right? If we are prepared to face the consequences, they be personal or political. History has shown us that change is not achieved without sacrifice. It is in the face of adversity that our resolve is truly tested. And finally, one more point. Uh, uh, I would like to make this point that there is hope. Dahil kulay rosas ang bukas, uh, the last presidential elections uh, saw how millions went out of their way to choose hope over despair, to choose courage over fear, to speak up, and to choose to speak up over remaining silent, to choose to make a stand over indifference and ap apathy. Yes, we did not reach the mountain top. But then, the journey to the peak continues. Many wept. Many were in tears. Many grieved. But definitely, we will use the tears, the sweat, the blood to continue to water the seeds of hope, courage, of uh, making a stand. And we are, I am certain that the future, through young people like you, will be better than the present. Percy's sacrifice, as I said, will be watering the seeds of change. He did not and will not die in vain. Maraming salamat at magandang umaga. Maraming salamat yata. Jim, at best wishes. Masaya po si Jim ngayon, kaya nag-uumapaw ang introduction. Uh, sa mga po, tatin pala si, ano, si uh, Senadora uh, Risa Ontiveros po, no, panorin po natin yung talumpati niya. Congratulations sa iyong asawa. Ah, sa iyo pala, at best wishes sa kanya, sa kabaro mo. Baliktad. So, magandang magandang umaga po sa ating lahat, mga kasama. Gandang umaga po. Okay. So, allow me to greet uh, my colleague, former, and hopefully soon to be again, Senator Kiko Pangilinan. Woo! <laughs> Our national artist, Virilio Almario, the fabled Rio Alma. Our friends from the diplomatic community, including Laura Bofiz, Ambassador of the United Kingdom to the Philippines, Dali Bormica, Charge d'Affaires of the Czech Embassy in Manila, President Jimenez of the University of the Philippines, Samantha Parks of the United States Embassy in Manila, and Renuka Randawa, Second Secretary, Political Section of the UK Embassy in Manila. Likewise, ang ating lahat ng mga kabataang Pag-asa ni Inang Bayan dito sa front row hanggang sa buong uh, si Led, Veronica, Caroy. At yes, palakpakan po natin si Caroy din. <laughs> Glenda Gloria, hello. Palakpakan natin ang Glenda at ang buong Rappler. At, uh, Cara David, palakpakan po natin. Woo! Bakit hindi? This is your territory. Mga panauhin kami dito Cara na mga hindi na full-time media. Uh, din po pala. At sa lahat po, magandang, uh, magandang umaga po. Um, let me also greet our organizer, the Center for People's Media, Philippine Media Advocacy Asia, our friends from the Academe, as well as Kapersi's friends and colleagues in the media. I thank all of you, marami pong salamat, for lending your time, your ideas, and your support to this important forum. Exactly one year ago, Percival Mabasa, Ka Percy, paid the ultimate price for speaking truth to power. Ka Percy Lapid was killed by men who sought to silence him and his fiery brand of journalism. After all, 
his reporting, and we saw wonderful snippets of it, offended and irked people of power and influence from corruption, human rights abuses, and government mismanagement. Cap Percy was never afraid to tell the truth and to advocate for what is right. For Percy Lapid, the truth was always worth telling, no matter how difficult, unpopular, or deadly it is to do so. His story, unfortunately, is all too common in our supposedly free and democratic country. In 2022, the Global Watchdog Committee to Protect Journalists ranked the Philippines the seventh most dangerous country in the world Seven. for media Did workers, it. behind only active war zones like Somalia, Syria, Iraq, and Afghanistan. South Sudan. Afghanistan. After Kapersi's killing, the list of slain Filipino journalists has only grown longer in June of this year, broadcaster Crescenciano Bundukin was killed in Oriental Mindoro, the third media personality to be killed during the administration of this president. Beyond threats of physical violence, Filipino media workers also operate in an environment where journalists may be slapped with civil, criminal, or administrative charges due to their reporting as in the case of independent online media, Rappler. Our journalists have had to deal with rampant disinformation and propaganda campaigns, especially in the online space, which not only affect their reach and distribution, but also incite real-world violence against those in the media industry. Make no mistake, these attacks on journalists whether physical or otherwise, represent a worsening challenge to Philippine democracy itself. Every slain journalist weakens our collective ability to speak truth to power, to demand justice, transparency, and accountability, and to defend our basic rights. Upholding press freedom and protecting our journalists starts with the promotion of the rule of law to dismantle the culture of impunity regarding media killings, we must identify, investigate, and prosecute those behind these heinous acts. The Philippines has a sorry track record when it comes to achieving justice for media killings. According to a report in 2022 by the Center for Media Freedom and Responsibility, of the 176 media workers killed in the Philippines since 1986, only 19 have resulted in conviction. Capercy's case offers a unique opportunity to turn things around and set a model for obtaining justice in media killings. Earlier this year, several high-ranking government officials were formally indicted for their roles in the death of Capercy including former Bucor Chief Gerald Bantag. I remain hopeful that Bantag and the other accused individuals on the run will be brought before the courts to face the charges against them. I believe that sooner rather than later, justice for Cap Percy's death will be achieved. While we continue to clamor for the successful investigation and prosecution of media killings. We should also work on fostering an environment that guarantees journalists not only safety from physical violence, but also legal harassment. In the Senate, I've filed Senate Bill Number 1593, which seeks to finally decriminalize libel in the Philippines. And mm. yes, Alakpakan po natin Maybe. lahat ng mga nauna sa labang iyan. Nagamit ng mga mayaman. And end the weaponization of criminal laws to stifle the freedom of the press. Hmm. Alongside a growing coalition of partners within and outside the Senate, I will continue to push for the decriminalization of libel. I believe that more and more people are seeing that journalists should not be made to face criminal charges simply for doing their job. It is clear 
that much of the reforms which must be undertaken to stop media killings and better protect press freedom in the Philippines lie with the government. However, that does not mean that the rest of the country or the world should only watch and hope for the best. Every voice and demand for justice counts, be it from inside the government, the diplomatic circle, the academe, the media industry, and every, every everyday Filipino. We must never tire of standing in solidarity and of speaking up for those who cannot. Friends, we owe it to Kapersi and to every single journalist slain in the line of duty to continue to seek and speak the truth mm. and to continue the fight for genuine freedom of the press and expression so mm. essential to our democracy. No ifs and no buts. Before ending this sharing, allow me to send a message to the wife and children of Kapur C. Lapid. Ma'am Lisa, they are beautiful and talented, talented children. Karoy, similarly courageous and faithful to the cause. We pray that you have found peace, joy, and love one year after Kapur C.'s passing. And thanks to the friends who made that search possible. Know that your family is never alone in your quest for justice. We are all with you. As I've said in the past, death could never silence Capercy and all the slain Filipino journalists. Their fight for truth and justice speaks so loudly to all of us, even now. We are listening. We will not be cowed and we will continue the fight. Marami pong salamat sa inyong lahat. Mabuhay. Ayan po yung uh, panum, uh, yung ano nila, no? talumpati nila. Uh, ano po para po sa akin, ano to? Uh, uh, parang nakakalakas po ng loob kasi uh, nagpapakita po na hindi lang tayo nag-iisa. Marami tayo uh, sumusuporta kay uh, Kapersi. No? At hindi po nasayang ang uh, kanyang uh, buhay. Uh, pagpatuloy lang po natin uh, hindi pa po tapos ang laban uh, hanggang dito na lang po ako ng gabi at uh, sana uh, uh, nasa uh, mabuti ng kalagayan si uh, Kapersi sa langit ano? rest in peace po at saka nasa mga na, natitiran niyang uh, mga pamilya uh, nakikiramay po kami at uh, sumusuporta uh, hindi po nila mapapatahimik ang uh, taong bayan maraming salamat po Uh, marami salamat po sa mga nagpunta no si sis best friend Sir Gis, sis uh, Josephine uh, Lorca, sa si Siro, si Salpachinko, Sir Rabuy, Sir Gis na banggit ko na. Uh, marami salamat po sa inyo sa pagpunta at uh, magandang gabi po sa inyong lahat.